visar dig till det djupa mörker där du kan begrunda vad ont Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 horror movie jerks that got what they deserved. For this list, we'll be looking at mean characters in horror films that got their comeuppance. Beware, spoilers lie ahead. Which character were you glad to see get their just desserts? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Trent Sutton – Friday the 13th Slasher movies have lots of characters who lack compassion for those around them. In the Friday the 13th remake, Trent was your typical wealthy and smug jerk. Look, Clay, obviously she's just trying to be nice, hmm. but you can't stay here. No offense, but this is a private party. I don't know you. No, you don't know me. That's so funny. I just said that like two seconds ago that I don't know you. Long before Jason shows up, he's seen tormenting poor Clay, who's just looking for his lost sister. He also looks down on his so-called friends for partying and cheats on his girlfriend after she offers to help Clay. You'd think someone who didn't want to drink would be helpful when the killer shows up, but you'd be wrong. Are you serious? What? There is a killer out there. He's the one who cut the lights, okay? Frank, don't you get it? Chelsea and Nolan never came back. He doesn't even believe Clay's warnings until he hears one of his friends dying. Oh, you can't go out there. We have to help him. No, we can't, okay? He's using your friend as bait. He wants us to go out there. Well, you don't know that. Jesus, where are the police? When Jason catches up to him, we can't say we were too surprised at the outcome. Number 9. Ruby Deagle – Gremlins Money clearly doesn't bring happiness, as evidenced by this horrible woman. Good morning, Mrs. Deagle. What's good about him? Oh. Ruby Deagle controls Kingston Falls Bank and was one of the wealthiest people in the town. The bank and I have the same purpose in life, to make money. Not to support a lot of deadbeats. Mrs. Deagle, it's Christmas! Despite being better off than everyone else, Ruby relished bringing misery to others. She's only in a couple of scenes, though she immediately comes off as cruel, overdramatic, and antagonistic towards her employees. Where's that psychotic canine of yours still hiding under the counter? Uh, no, I'm afraid he's on vacation. You'd better keep him behind locked doors, because if I catch him, he's in for slow death. When the gremlins begin their rampage, they pay Ruby a visit. And by tampering with her stair lift, they send her flying out the window into the night sky. Ruby should have known to treat others with kindness around Christmas. Hasn't she ever heard of a Christmas carol? Number 8. Oren Scrivello – Little Shop of Horrors Going to the dentist isn't exactly the most pleasant experience, but we suppose things could be a lot worse. Oren, played by a manic Steve Martin, derives immense pleasure from causing others pain. Hence, his profession. And I get off on the pain I inflict! When he isn't delighting in the shrieks of his patients, he gets joy from abusing his girlfriend, Audrey. This catches the attention of Seymour, who plans to put an end to Oren. The guy sure looks like plant food to me. The guy sure looks like plant food to me. Oh. He's so nasty, treating her rough. Yeah. Smacking her around and always talking so tough. You need blood and he's got more than enough. Ah. Things don't go quite according to plan, however, as Oren does the job for him. With Seymour in his chair, Oren puts on a special nitrous oxide mask so he can enjoy things a little more. It promptly breaks, causing Oren to die from laughter. What'd I ever do to you? Nothing. It's what you did to her. Her who? Oh. Her. Well, that just seems like the best for everyone. Number 7. Buddy Repperton, Christine 
If you're an antagonist in a Stephen King movie, things are about to get very, very ugly for you. I'll fix you. You're gonna wish you were never born. Buddy spends the majority of his screen time terrorizing poor Arnie Cunningham, beating him up and replacing part of his last name with a particularly vulgar word. You want it? Come get it. If it's yours, why doesn't it have your name on here anyway? When Arnie gets a new car, Buddy decides to vandalize it. If only he knew the car had a violent mind of its own. Is that Cunningham? Can't be. Look at my car. Come on, prick! We're not finished yet! Come on! Christine later tracks him to a gas station, where it disposes of his friends in a fiery explosion. The flaming car then chases Buddy down the street before running him over. That'll teach you to respect other people's property. Number 6. Everyone. Unfriended. Always treat your friends with kindness. If you don't, it could come back to haunt you. Literally. This horror film takes place entirely on a computer screen as a video chat between high school friends is interrupted by a mysterious presence. Guys, who is this? I don't know. Is here the whole time? Ken, you said it was just a glitch. Well, the glitch just typed. The presence is the spirit of Laura Barnes, a girl who took her own life after an embarrassing video was posted online. What do you want? What video? Laura knows all of their deepest, darkest secrets and reveals them over the course of the movie. But the vengeful ghost isn't satisfied with just that forcing many of them to follow her into death. Ken? Ken? Is Ken? Is he okay? Number 5. Judge Turpin Sweeney Todd, the Demon Barber of Fleet Street Alan Rickman played some truly despicable characters over the course of his career, but Judge Turpin may be the most vile. A pious vulture of the law who with a gesture of his claw removed the barber from his plate then there was nothing but to wait the evil judge exiles benjamin barker aka sweeney todd to australia on false charges assaults his wife lucy and raises his daughter joanna as his own not only that but he also has plans to force joanna into marriage in order to shield her from the evils of this world, I have decided to marry my dear Joanna. Oh, sir, happy news indeed. Strangely, when I offered myself to her, she showed a certain reluctance. Even outside of the film's main narrative, he's just a really bad dude. Your persistent dedication to a life of crime is an abomination before God and man. I therefore sentence you to hang by the neck until you're dead, and may the Lord have mercy on your soul. Court is adjourned. What kind of jerk would sentence a child to death? So when Todd finally got his hands on Turpin, we couldn't help feeling that his vengeance was justified. Place for prisoner in the dark. It's not particularly memorable. Number 4. Frank and Julia Cotton Hellraiser Having an affair with your sibling-in-law is a pretty despicable act, but that's just the tip of the iceberg for these two. Captured by the Cenobites to be tortured for eternity, Frank schemes to return to the living with Julia's help. You can't leave me like this, you can't. What do you want me to do? The blood brought me this far. I need more. She lures men to her home, allowing Frank to absorb them. But wait, it gets worse. What is it? I don't know where to begin. What are you talking about? It's best you see for yourself. Frank kills his brother Larry, taking his skin as a disguise, and tries to kill Larry's daughter, Kirsty. Gotta get out! 
out of here! No, stay with us. We can all be happy here. Come to daddy. Frank and Julia get their comeuppance, however, when Frank accidentally stabs Julia, and the Cenobites drag him back to their hellish dimension. No matter your family drama, at least it isn't anything like this. Number 3. Cleopatra and Hercules Freaks Todd Browning's cult classic Freaks chronicles the nefarious plot of Cleopatra and Hercules, a trapeze artist and a strongman in a carnival sideshow. The duo plan to have Cleopatra marry Hans and murder him in order to gain his sizable inheritance. A fortune! And I have him like that! The truth is, lands, he knew enough to keep his mouth shut. I could marry him. Yes, she would marry me. That's already pretty evil, but Cleopatra has shown cruelly dehumanizing the carnival's performers, including Hans. No. If she hadn't been so mean to everyone, the plan may have worked. In the climax, Hercules is attacked by the so-called circus freaks with daggers. Cleopatra suffers an even worse fate, getting turned into a human duck. How she got that way will never be known. Some say a jealous lover, others that it was the code of the freaks, others the storm. That's pretty dark, but there is some poetic justice in seeing her become one of the freaks she despised. Number 2. Captain Henry Rhodes – Day of the Dead In a film filled with flesh-eating monsters, it takes a lot to be crowned the biggest jerk. Captain Henry Rhodes succeeds with flying colors. This ain't a goddamn field trip, people. This is a f***ing war! I'm not down in this cave for my health. I'm down here on orders. Rhodes is the military man in charge of a base housing scientists as they work towards a solution to the zombie apocalypse. One might think you'd want to keep those minds calm and safe, but Rhodes doesn't go that route. I'm running this monkey farm now, Frankenstein, and I want to know what the f*** you're doing with my time! He prefers to threaten, demean, and eventually murder those who refuse any command. One scientist, Dr. Logan, even makes progress, but Rhodes is shown to have no interest in actually helping save anyone. What the f is wrong with you people? They're dead! They're f***ing dead, and you want to teach them tricks? They have to be rewarded, Captain. Why else will they do what we want them to do? I don't want him to do anything but drop over! His devilish behavior comes back to bite him in the end, as does a whole horde of zombies. So there's that. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Chris Hargison and Billy Nolan Carrie. These high school antagonists trigger one of the most iconic revenge scenes in film history, so you know they screwed up big time. When Carrie isn't dealing with her abusive mother, she's being antagonized by Chris at school. Chris's own actions get her banned from the prom, but to her, Carrie's the one to blame. This isn't over. This isn't over by a long shot! You're out of the prom, Harkinson. She and her boyfriend Billy devise a plan to humiliate the poor girl, ensuring she gets crowned prom queen so they can dump a bucket of pig's blood on her. Jesus, you wanna get caught? That Carol Lange is sure is cute. Thank you very much, Thought you said they were gonna win. Being crowned was likely the happiest moment in Carrie's sad life, but it was immediately ruined by these two tools. Carrie gets her revenge, however. Wow. 
and we can't say that it isn't sweet. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.